we used to say to the cricket lads and you know we're saying to the footballer uh, international sport is not for everyone in the same way that being an SAS soldier is not for everyone mm-hmm. it comes with a choice and it comes at a cost so our training programs and our training modalities need to reflect the fact that it's really really hard so so if we haven't um you know, if we haven't exposed players to the relevant experiences that are required to be a premier league footballer during their development journey like we've let them down in the same way that back in the day you know if we want a young lad to have the skills and capabilities to walk out at uh, you know, the SCG in front of 40,000 people and faced fast bowlers bowling at 90 mile an hour at their head. Like, we have to make training really, really hard. And that was one of the SAS principles is around, you know, the, the level of training and, and creating consequences within training. Um, so, yeah, long-winded answer, but no, yeah, I spent time, yeah, I spent time looking at, you know, how to, how to Google re- recruit people, how to Google um, um, deploy development plans into their into their teams to ensure constant learning. How does the elite military work? So, so I, I guess I've been really fortunate to get to know some people really well and, and nick their ideas and grab their principles and then try and put them into our programmes. Mm-hmm. Oh, brilliant. And what does, uh, I've forgotten his first name already, Mr Woodrow, what, what does Floyd. he do? What Floyd Woodrow, what does he do with Southampton uh, now? Yeah, yeah. So, so Floyd does a couple of things. Um, We've we've run a pilot program last year um, with our scholars, which um, Floyd has created a kind of a personal development program called Compass for Life, which is an outstanding program. He's currently working with the military. He's working with prisons, works with schools. And we really like the concept. So I got together with our head of psychology, Malcolm Frame, and we looked at this and, and our head of life skills in Herding. And we thought, oh, this looks really good. So Floyd has come in and run a program with the scholars and it's about being really, really aspirational, both on and off the pitch, because, you know, the statistics aren't great in terms of the number of these lads who even at scholars age are going to become, you know, Premier League footballers or even have a lengthy professional career. So we've got to obviously ensure that they are well set up for their future. So this program creates a really nice user-friendly model about being aspirational in every aspect of your life. So that's one function. And then Floyd also supports us. We run an internal um, staff leadership program for our performance staff, which we call Optimize. And we had two days with Floyd about a couple of weeks ago. I'm laughing as I uh, think about it because the Floyd, as well as others, um, are involved in delivering this program. But Floyd, Floyd opened up with a two-day hit uh, to the to the cohort, which involved, uh, let's say, some high stress to find out how they respond to stress, how they work as a team, how they work as individuals, and that's both cognitively and and there was some physical stuff in. But I'm laughing because I knew as soon as so myself and Mark Jarvis, who's our director of performance support here, we sort of run the program and uh, had sort of co-designed it with Floyd and. Uh, I knew Floyd wanted to do something physical with the group. And from my previous experience, I know that he likes the leaders to be role modelled in this as well. So yeah. I made sure I had my tracksuit on. There's some quite funny photos of myself and Mikey Harris, who's our under-18s coach, just like flat out on the floor, sparked out with a with a giant former SAS man peering over us, laughing at us. So 